Welcome to the Life as an Observer podcast. My name is Ryan Bean. I am your host in self-observation. This podcast is an exploration of physical and non-physical self through discussion around yoga, meditation, self-improvement, self-realization, and practices that elevate the mind-body-soul connection. Let's start observing. This episode of Life as an Observer is made possible by patron support. If you'd like to support this program, you can visit patron.podbean.com backslash life as an observer to learn more. Welcome to Life as an Observer. Today I have the very unique and amazing opportunity to talk to Dasi Paredes. She is a water goddess. We have discovered that she knows a lot about the water that we drink and maybe even some of the water that is hard to get in areas where they don't have access to clean water and also just some information about the the droughts that are happening and ways that we can improve our health by using living water. Dasi talks a little bit about where to get the products and how it uh, how it functions, why we want to have control over the um, acidic or alkaline properties of our water. She also goes into talking about different uses, not just drinking it, but how to use it to wash our food, how to clean, and the reasons why we would want to make a change from what we think is clean water in our bottled plastic containers and make a change to moving to a more living water, to a water that bubbles and has these unique properties that make it a medical grade water, not only enhancing your health, but enhancing the community around you, enhancing your life. It's really amazing some of the stuff that she, she talked about, just an amazing soul, someone who, um, is infectious with her personality. I think you're really going to like this episode of Life as an Observer with Dasi Paredes. Well, hello and welcome. I'm glad that you're here, Dasi. Aloha, Ryan. So Aloha. Such, such a pleasure to be on here this evening or this morning. So we chatted a little bit um, and, and you're um, in Texas and you're having a very cold day in the great state of Texas. Um, yes. It's also quite freezing here in Utah, but I'm very happy about it. I just uh, went on a frost walk this morning, barefoot in the park behind my house and took, uh, took the dog with me and we're all sort of climatizing and acclimating and finding <laughs> these stressors that, that make our, uh, our lives sometimes a pain in the butt and sometimes they help us to become stronger and more resilient and, and whatnot. So I want to kind of introduce you um, to those who are listening. Um, Dasi Paredes um, goes by Awakened Soul, which is really interesting. I haven't told you about this, about that name, Awakened Soul, but um, uh, goes by that on Instagram. Um, all things water. I just want to, I, I think I was, if I was to give her a title, she's the water goddess and just someone who celebrates um, hydration, not just hydration, but also just clean living, clean. Um, Thank you. Techniques, clean. Just I, I've, I saw some things. We watched a video together and, and you showed me some things that I was unaware of. And so today's kind of focus is kind of be to educate the audience about some of those little things that we kind of take for granted especially if you live in a Western world that we, some of the things we take for granted in the way of water, um, but also just some of the things that, that kind of go fly underneath the radar that we are oblivious to, unless you really do the research, um, you don't really know what's in your food. I think we've found that, you know, I, I, um, I just did a book club for uh, James Nestor's book called Breath. And it's a really amazing book where he talks about our um, kind of our evolution and how we took uh, processing food from from our through our evolution and how that's actually changed the way our faces are structured. Um, because we don't chew as much because we're eating processed and cooked food and how our mouths have narrowed. And that includes shortening or shrinking our breathway, which is our nasal breathway mostly. 
thus creating a whole complex of problems with our nervous system because we're breathing through our mouths, which create a fight or flight response. We're having sleep apnea because we're breathing through our mouths and snoring. Um, there's all kinds of different things that are happening. And I can imagine that that was just a piece of what we put in our bodies. That was our, well, our breath and our food. But what about our water? I mean, I would our think water. that that over time, the way that we have um, ingested water has changed. The way that we can, I mean, we used to be able to scoop it out of a river somewhere, a stream or whatever, take a sip of it. And that's not really the case for many of us now. We turn on a faucet, which is what some people do, but most people say that's gross water. So I'm going to buy it in a <laughs> bottle, but I'm learning from you that even buying it from a bottle, it may not be the best thing either. Um, I've seen yeah. some of your tests and stuff. So can you talk to me a little bit about the evolution of water and kind of where we're at now, where we're at, like with our, with our water, and what we drink now? Of course. Thank you for getting on this topic. I'm super passionate about this because I actually didn't understand the issue with bottled water until recently. And I just started diving in deeper on what is water? Why do we have this luxury of water? And why is it that these, these companies are making millions of dollars on bottled water? If it's just water, what is it truly that we're trying to sell? What is it truly that we're trying to give to the people? And so learning about bottled water and the evolution. So it used to be where we were able to go to a river and just grab a nice, nice little cup in our hands and just have a nice drink of water and just know that this water isn't polluted. It's not acidic. There's nothing that's contaminating my water. And now we move to the luxury of having the access of going to our faucet, going to our Brita filter, if people, you know, use those or having the access of, you know, opening the fridge and opening up a bottled water. But when you're drinking bottled water, are you thinking about, it's kind of like your food source. Where's your food coming from? Where's your water coming from? And how long has it been in that bottle for? You know, one thing that's taken over in this in this decade of course is plastic and so how long is our water necessarily sitting in plastic is you know by the time it's in a warehouse being bottled up it's sitting there for six to eight months and then it's in the back of a truck in heat for you know two to three weeks and then it's in the back of a store in the back of their pallets and then they have to unbox everything and then put it away so how long really is it sitting on the shelf before it's actually being ingested by the by is being drunk by the the consumer. And so we're all having all those seeping, seeping uh, microplastics that are getting into your water. And not only that, in order to preserve your water, in order to like the alkaline bottled water that everyone talks about, like, oh, I drink Essentia, I drink Alkaline 88. How is true alkaline water staying alive for that long. Water's supposed to be of nutrients for you as it was, you know, people would, and now people still do travel far ways to get clean source living water. And how is it that a bottled water sitting in plastic that's been bottled for about eight months to a year, if that um, living enough to preserve, to bring alkalinity in the body? Well, we have to use, they, the way they can do that is by using chemicals in your and putting it in the water to preserve the life of alkalinity, but it's only staying that way because of a chemical change, not an electrical change, which is mm. typically why, which is one of the reasons why I invested in my health and decided to truly learn about water and living water itself. I wanted to be hydrated on a electrical change on a cellular change rather than just being, I guess you would say hydrated in the yeah, sense yeah. of dead water. You know, you, we were talking about getting it out of the water. I think I told you this in a previous conversation, but my friend Rob, who lives in uh, near Asheville, North Carolina, he lives on uh, Mineral Creek, which kind of goes into a reservoir, which is essentially the water supply for all of Asheville, but in that, in that region of North Carolina, but on his property, uh, I'd never seen this before, I guess, because just of where I live in the world, but I'd never seen just someone just stick a, uh, you know, a pipe in the ground and water start coming out of it. I just, uh, you know, living in Florida, I know that it's possible, but we never really wanted that water. You know, it was just exactly. kind of like, you know, I know, I know that the, the, the aquifer is quite low and you could, you could easily dig a couple feet down and find 
water, but you know, we didn't know that we would really want that water kind of swampy monkey, you know, not really that great, but there, they're right there on the spring and um, he has them all over his property. And he encouraged all of us to, you know, to try the water, enjoy it. It's like a, a special thing. He's like, he said, people come onto his property and fill up these jugs of water. And the only time that I've ever done that, I was in another place in, in Georgia, in Brunswick, Georgia, where they had it, the aquifer was right there. And they were using a a limestone filtering system basically uh, for their gray water. And it was just this great way of reclamation of their water. And again, it's a, I just felt better. Um, it, not, it wasn't just that it tasted better. I think that's kind of where we, we have a mistaken identity with water is like, Oh, if it tastes better then it must be better. But it actually, it actually made me feel better um, drinking that water where I didn't feel like you know, bloating. I didn't feel like, I just felt like I was hydrated and it, and it felt really, really good. And I, I like that a lot. I mean, I, I know that there are lots of options out there. So I want to ask you about the bottled water and then I want to kind of get into some statistics about water, but are those chemicals that you were talking about, are they written on the bottles anywhere? Yes. So, um, for example, if you were to have an Essentia water bottle on the back, it says magnesium sulfate, bar- uh, sodium bicarbonate. And actually, I think I have a, a bottled water <laughs> near me. Let's see what, <laughs> look, this is what uh, Smart Water says. So, Smart Water 9.5 alkaline, it says calcium chloride, magnesium chloride, potassium bicarbonate, and electrolytes sources added for taste. So not only are they giving us chemicals, but they're telling us an electrolyte source. What source is that? And how reliable yeah. are we going to be trusting a bottled water company to really alkaline our water and give us true living hydrating water? Well, I know from like my own um, work with breath that, that I can change my, my body chemistry and my alkalinity. I can do that quite yes. easily through breath. Um, the air changes at the, the amount of oxygen we bring into our body, then sends us to a more alkaline, the more CO2 we have, the more acidic we are. And, but I know that eventually we come into a place of equanimity or, or homeostasis. And exactly. I would get, I would, and I would guess that our water does the same. So even though maybe they're writing it on there as 9.5, maybe that's what it was when they, dumped it into a plastic bottle, but I would imagine that, that, that pH does not stay 9.5 when it, when the consumer buys it. I mean, have you done, I know you've done some testing. Tell me about that a little bit. So yes, I've done some testing because I've seen, you know, articles, I've seen videos that have, you know, kind of shown me the true on bottled water and also of course dead water, but I'm the type of person who I want to see it be done. And I also would rather do it myself just to make sure that it's completely of true because you never know what you're going to find on the internet, of course. And so I've actually done testing as to where I actually have these wonderful pH drops and I'll go ahead and, you know, drop a little of that into the bottled water that I'm experimenting on, whether it be Essentia, Alkaline 88, Smart Water Alkaline, and um, even Smart Water. Um, this one is supposed to be alkaline and the other ones that are not supposed to be alkaline, it comes out acidic. So on the acidic platform, we have it ranging from um, orange all the way to purple and dark purple being the most alkaline. And then we also have red and orange being the most acidic. And so when, um, as soon as this bottle is opened and it reaches oxygen, which is it oxidizes, this water actually is dead water. And it's only because of the chemical change. They're only adding chemicals to make it seem that it is alkaline water but reality when oxygen hits which is everywhere we're truly drinking dead water Mm. it's so dead water in the way of nutrients i mean we're still getting hydration right i mean you're still getting well cell hydration or no well i've learned that bottled water and just regular water is actually only hydrating you up to 10 to 15 percent Mm. It actually is not being absorbed by your cells as true living alkalized electrolyzed water would. The water that I'm drinking, my living water, actually hydrates your cell um, up to 95%. And the reason why that is, is because the water that I'm drinking also um, is being created through a process called electrolysis, electrolysis, which is giving me molecular hydrogen as well. And this Uh, Molecular hydrogen is the only antioxidant, the most potent known to man that can be absorbed by a cell 
small enough where it can actually reach the mitochondria and other parts of the cell that big particle dead water can't. So that's why my water hydrates me on a 95% level up to 95% level, whether, and I don't have to drink as much to feel hydrated, um, where I would have to drink, you know, that's why they always tell you drink eight bottles of water a day and all these things, but are you really hydrating yourself? That was my next question. Yeah. I mean, so I mean, it's interesting. You're talking about, you know, getting into the mitochondria and which is really getting into the DNA. Right? <laughs> if you really think about it. So we're, so as we hydrate and we're, we're going through a cellular respiration and we're, we're bringing in oxygen, we're, producing co2 or producing atp which is energy we're getting into the mitochondria yes. and there's that's where the dna lives and um which is essentially our evolution in its building block form and what i was kind of going with here is it, i don't have a way to know if i'm hydrated okay i have no way other than <laughs> how often i go to the bathroom i have no like real way of measuring that um, other than saying, okay, I'm peeing a lot today. So I must, clear. and it's clear. So I <laughs> must be hydrated. I must be, but that may not always be the truth, uh, necessarily. So you, you kind of hit it on it, but I'd like to go a little further. So when I drink living water rather mm -hmm. than, um, I mean, me personally, I drink out of a Brita that's uh, not, not a Brita, sorry, a Berkey. This is my Berkey. Berkey yes. You said Brita earlier and I went there. So I drink out of a Berkey <laughs> and that's where I get my, that's where I get my water and the only place I get my water. Um, and I feel quite good. I feel like I, I want to drink more. I, I feel like mm -hmm. I want to, however, it sounds as though when I'm drinking a more living water or something that's a little bit better for me. I have to, I don't have to drink as much. So that whole eight, eight uh, glasses of water a day doesn't apply when you're drinking good water. Is that right? Well, when we drink water, we're drinking water. We have that luxury of drinking it because, oh, I'm thirsty. I feel thirsty. I'm going to drink water or it's a hot day outside. I'm going to drink water, but we drink water to hydrate ourselves. And actually I learned that 75% of Americans are chronically dehydrated and they have no idea that they are. And so when I drink water, I drink water with purpose. Um, and just going through all information I've learned about water and the resourcing and how much of a luxury it is to have it available to me. Um, I drink it with intention. I wanted to hydrate my body on another level than just, oh, I'm just intent unintentionally drinking water just to drink water. I want to drink it because it's hydrating me. It's a nutrient to my body. It's doing something other than just going through my body. It's, it's hydrating my cells. It's giving me energy. It's, it's helping me with other things like water is one of the most important things for your body is a necessity that we live on, that we absolutely need our, our body. 99% of our cells run through water. So I just want to make sure that if I'm going to be filling up my water, my body with fuel, I guess you would say water, it's going to be the best water out there for me. And I've been through some experiences in my life where um, I was able to really see differences between bottled water. I even had a Brita as well because I thought Brita was doing something. And then I really learned about the chemicals and toxins that weren't being removed. And then I ended up really learning, diving deep into true living water and how it's hydrating me um, within 30 seconds of consuming. Tell me a little bit about the intention behind the drinking water. I want to, I'll, I'll tell a quick little story. I think I've told you this before, but I want to tell the audience. Um, so when I, when I host retreats, um, we'll have water bottles. Now I try to get the BPA free ones or I'm guessing glass and blue glass is probably better, but these are just <laughs> things for to encourage, um, hydrating. And usually we have an infused water there, um, just to encourage drinking, um, especially if we're doing a lot of things in the retreats, we're being active, we're doing yoga, we're moving, we're get, you know, there's just a lot happening on an emotional level, on a creative level, a spiritual level. And I feel when you're hydrated, um, you're a little bit more energetic. You feel not as drained. And so um, we encourage that. And what we do is we have them write intentions on those bottles. We, we you know, give them a, a Sharpie and we write their daily intention on there, whatever. I'm abundant. I'm successful. I'm beautiful. I'm worthy, whatever. And so every time that someone holds up their glass and says, cheers, they drink it. They're looking at that intention and they're drinking that intention. And it's a really exactly. beautiful process to do beautiful. that, knowing that that intention is in something that's living, that you're bringing it in and that, that you're commingling 
or co-creating with this force of nature. And tell me a little bit about your intention process with your water. So my intention with my water is honestly didn't change until last year. I honestly, I don't even think I drank that much water. I mean, I did drink, but I don't think I was drinking it because I wanted to feel a certain way or I wanted to be full my body up with the best nutrients. I kind of just drank water because I was always told, Hey, you need to drink water or, and there's a reason why people are always saying, Oh, if you have a headache, have you drank enough water today? Or when you're outside on a hot day and you're not feeling the best, you're like, maybe it's because you're dehydrated. And my intention with drinking my water is I just want to, I want to understand and I want to feel the power of my living water. And I want to understand what is, what really is doing for my body. It's not just, it's not just hydrating me, but it's doing so much more. Um, I've been through some health, minor health ailments and I, through, through this, through living water, I have recently noticed such drastic differences that I don't, I don't no longer deal with. And I affirm this water and I'm like, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to just have this right here in the convenience of my home, to be able to have a bottle filled up. Thank you for the luxury of not having, uh, the luxury of having it at home and just being able to, it just puts into perspective all the greatest blessings that are walking into my life, the abundance that's walking through me and flowing through me, not just this is water and this is water. And that's all it's ever going to be. It's more so the abundance coming from it, the nutrients coming from it, the love coming from it and me giving it back. So, you know, our body is our, we can, we can always control the way we feel. We control the way we control our breaths, the way we control our mind, our thoughts, everything has to do with, love and the way you're you're feeling towards your body so why not do that with the best intention of feeding yourself fuel of love water nutrients and nutrients being um, affirmations words of affirmation service and I show service by really going full in forth and hydrating myself with the best water I try to do that as much as possible. I just got back from, I just got back from a trip in, um, in, in Europe. And while, while there, um, you don't always have the opportunity to find yes. the best water. It's like, um, I searched. And then of course you're going through airport, uh, you know, security lines and you have to have an empty bottle. And I know you're going to talk to me a little bit about that here in a second, <laughs> but I, so I, I travel with a hydro flask and I try to fill it up at the, you know, the little stations that are around the airport. Um, and just wherever I, wherever I can, because I'd rather have something than nothing, but I know that with, with living water, that it has some approvals to be able to travel with it for those who are interested in carrying this, uh, we'll call it, I, I want to even like, I want to call it medicine. I, I want to say that it is. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. <might> as well. <laughs> and so tell me a little bit about the process of traveling with living water. Yeah, of course. So I have, I travel here and there. I was a flight attendant, but I know how the process of traveling works. Usually you're into TSA and we're, they're always yelling all electronics, all electronics in a bucket. And also make sure you dump out your water before you get into the line. I don't have that problem. That's not the case with my, with my living water. So because I have medical grade water. It's the only medical grade water in the world, um, only TSA approved in the world. So actually I just went to California about a week and a half ago and I went through airport security. I had two giant um, gallons of my water. I, I wish I could insert a picture so you could see me <laughs> with my water, but um, I had two gallons of my water and I went through the line and the security guy, actually, I feel like he kind of knew. And I was like, I have a medical grade water. If y'all could just test it, I just want to get ahead and get through. And please don't um, scan it through the beamer because I don't want that radiation going to my water. I want my water to be alive. I want it to be away from all those uh, EMFs and, and radiation, things like that. So all they have to do is just test that it's medical grade. And I'm on my way to my destination. I have my water. I don't have to succumb to drinking plastic bottled water. I can go ahead and drink my water 
anywhere I desire and I can take it on the plane with me. And it's a great way to also share about the water because it, it, it helps people understand like, why is it that living water is the only medical grade TSA approved water in the world? And well, tell why us. is it that they allow why? it? <laughs> I'm curious <laughs> why. Because it's medical grade water. This water has helped heal over 150 health ailments, health ailments. And it actually the medical grade machine that creates living water, it was actually created in a hospital um, in Japan because they were using it for patients to um, help with the healing process of diabetes. And so what they would do is they would give you a bag of this water and tell you to drink it for three days, drink it for two days, come back and refill. And people were coming back and they said, we don't need any more, but we still want this water. And so people were coming back to get the water. And then that's where they're like, how can we create this in the convenience of your home? Because these machines were massive and they're like $80,000, $81,000. And so how can we put this in someone's home where they can have the convenience of flipping on their faucet and boom, you have living water at home. And I wish I could show you how beautiful this water is because <laughs> when you when you get it fresh out the, fa out the faucet, oh my gosh, it's like these beautiful bubbles of molecular hydrogen. And sometimes the water just tastes so good, you don't wanna stop. It's like juice, it's amazing. You can send me a video and when I- um... I will. And actually, so in the show notes, I'm going to put links to your social. And if you have videos like that, I can also link those. But I'm thinking for for advertising for this, maybe I'll have the the nice bubbly water and and your face <laughs> and 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 just say, you know, it's the next episode. So yeah, we'll do something with that so people can see what it looks like um, at least going forward. But that's pretty cool that they do that. So how do they test the water? They just they do like a, a strip so test, or what do they do? They honestly, um, I for recorded it before T typically we're not allowed to record in TSA if it's just yeah. like a rule and also they don't want the TSA employees being recorded but yeah. I've just seen them and they'll actually have a couple like uh, swabs kind of pr pretty much getting the particles of moist from the water and yeah. testing that and then they'll be able to approve it or not so that's pretty much how it hmm. works um, I can't go technical into that because I just kind of for my eyes see exactly what they're using like a little like a little paper swab and they pretty much get the particles of like from the moist from coming from the water and um they're able to approve the water and tell me if it's if it's mm. medical grade and so i mean i don't think you can just walk in with a dasani water bottle and be like yo this is med no they're not they're not gonna do that but um i just always make sure to have my confidence and just i have so much belief in this water and i'm just always and you know it causes conversation like whoa this water really is medical grade water and it's approved for TSA, like tell me more. And so that's the beauty of that. Yeah. I mean, I love that, that, that it exists out there, that there is something happening. Cause I mean, at least on this podcast, we talk a lot about the spiritual aspects and we talk a lot about breath work and meditation. And we talk a lot about, um, uh, even, um, uh, plant medicine and, and, in areas in our lives that, are sometimes overlooked, um, but these are gifts from nature most of the time where, you know, this, the peace we find when we're in nature and the connection to the cold, when we get into to the ice baths yes. and when we eat a mushroom that connects us to this oh. divinity that, that's beyond us. And the feeling you have when you're drinking a pure, clean product of, of the water, all those things are really connection back to our source connection back to the earth. And, um, I think that's where we find our most happiness really is, is like when we, when we feel, uh, the burdens and weights of the world are kind of lifted a little bit. I, I certainly do. When I go barefoot into, into the dirt, into nature, unless you catch a cactus, then maybe it doesn't feel as good, but most <laughs> of the time it feels really, really good. But I wanted to tell you, so I live in an area, um, we live in the, the Colorado river basin. I'm in yes. Utah, but we live in this area, which. At one time, I guess they would call it the Great Basin. And at one time there was an ocean here. And then as it receded over millions and millions of years ago, um, the geology changed quite a bit with lots of volcanoes, um, lots of beautiful rocks that are here. Um, and also rivers that have that have made their way through and created some pretty 
pretty amazing landmarks like the Grand Canyon is one of them. Yes. <laughs> one oh of the wonders of the world. Of course. Um, and another one, you know, through um, Zions National Park, through the Narrows, for the Virgin River that comes through. Um, we even have the Green River a little further up north and a couple other different rivers. And they all kind of come here into this area and eventually are collected in an area, a man-made lake called Lake Mead, um, which has the Hoover Dam and some other areas. And uh, I was reading something, I think this was from, uh, maybe it was from LifeWater. I'm, I'm quoting LifeWater a little bit today in some worldvision.org, but LifeWater, I think is who wrote this, but they said that the, that the, the river basin, this whole area of the Colorado River Basin has lost uh, 15.6 cubic miles of water in the last 10 years, uh, 11 years here. This is twice the amount stored in Lake Mead. So Lake Mead is a massive lake, you know. And they're saying that by 2040, there will not be enough water to quench the thirst and to be able to quench the thirst of all the power that's consumed by exactly South, um, Southern California and Las Vegas and that whole area that's kind of fueled by the Colorado River Basin. And which is, I mean, that's due to drought. That's, you know, there's just, there, we've had drought, we've had not enough water and we're using water in ways um, that are not mindful. Well, you know, the way that we, in some ways that we do agriculture, on the way we do farming, you know, the way that we feed different animals, um, how we're watering and what we're doing with water. And I want to see if I can, This we may not come up with a solution in our few minutes together here, but talk, <laughs> but talk to me a little bit about water conservation and how that affects um, in, your, in your perspective, our planet, not just in the Colorado River Basin, but, um, you know, having great, beautiful water is, is a luxury. And we're going to talk about that luxury, yes. but, but just having water in general might end up being a luxury. So can you talk to me a little bit about water conservation and some things that maybe the audience can think about on a very micro level? I mean, I would love to talk macro level and say, you know, we can do all these things if we just, you know, I have, I have one thing we're going to go into about war and about, you know, about our military, but um, can you talk about on a micro level, some, some ways that people can get involved with conserving or yeah, being course. more aware of their use of water? Yeah. So um, I've actually seen in other parts of the world where they have actually have been able to restructure um, parts of like rivers and dams to let the flow of water. Because if you if you dig deep enough, there's always going to be some sort of moist water. So you can restructure um, the flow of the water and have it um, going in a certain way because somewhere there's water and, and and yes it is drying out but that's where we would have to figure out how we can keep the flow of water going and when we talk about conserving water um there's so many ways that we can conserve water and it's just like the littlest things like you know if you have a leaky faucet and it's been leaking for like a year and you know how much water that you have yeah. that's just been just could be feeling uh, feeding a whole family. I mean, just something as simple as that, like a leaky faucet. I know we're going on the micro spectrum of like ways to conserve water. So a leaky faucet or, um, another thing is, what was I thinking as well? Um, Oh yeah. Also just limiting your time with water usage as in when, you know, a lot of people, we have the convenience and the luxury of using a dishwasher. And it's like, how much water are you really using to wash 20 plates or, you know, 10 cups, how much water is it really being used? And what are you filling up um, in, in, in specs of your dishwasher? Like how much water is really being filled up in there? Or just the usage of when you're taking baths and yes, are you taking baths, but how much water are you using doing that? And then after you take a bath, are you showering as well? So it's more so there's just so many ways to conserve water that it's in the littlest things that you do, or even when you're creating ice, how often do you really use all that ice? You typically don't until you have to burn the ice and then create new ice and everything just adds up slowly and slowly. And yes, I'm one person, but imagine if this one person turned into a thousand people and then 2000 people, um, what, what would you say you find ways to conserve water in? Well, so it made me think when you were talking about the, the dishwasher. So it's uh, something that I have the luxury of, but I try not to really use it all that much. Just 
Cause I know that I don't really need it. I don't need that full cycle, but washing clothes, you know, like when I lived in India, I washed my clothes in a bucket and that was quite easy. Um, and then you hung them up to dry, but here I do have a washing machine. I have that as a luxury, but something that I've done, and I kind of go back and forth with this battle of recycling or water conservancy. Cause so I stopped buying paper towels. It's just something that I said, I don't need to buy anymore. I don't, I don't feel like I need those. And so I went to the dollar store and I bought, I don't know, I think I bought uh, 20 little hand towels and I use those as napkins. I use those as dish towels. I use those for cleaning. Um, I have, and I have a little basket and then I wash them. And for me, I guess I feel, I, I go back and forth saying, well, am I, what if I was buying recycled paper towels instead of using up the water to wash these towels? And so I, I go back and forth. And I think that you don't really realize how much water you use until you have to be aware of it. And so when you live tiny, like I had a bus and now I'm looking at a, a van to move in. Um, and when you actually can see your water and how much you have and you have to fill up with what you can carry with you, and what, and then what is waste or gray water? What are you doing with that? And when you have to actually really be more um, in touch with it, I think that you tend to conserve more where you have water flow valves on your shower and where you, instead of taking long, hot showers, which feel really nice and that's great, but instead of doing that, get in, get clean, take a cold shower. So we're not having to heat it, take a cold shower, you, you do that and you're not only getting those benefits, but it actually, for most people, will limit how long they're in the shower just by taking it as a cold shower, even if it's just uh, just a few minutes. And as a, for me, it doesn't apply as much, but for you with long hair, ladies love this. I've <laughs> heard that taking a cold shower is actually really good for, for the hair fibers and, and really closing it up almost as a conditioner in a way whereas the heat strips it of its moisture. So, yeah. um, so taking a cold shower is actually quite beneficial. Um, I love cold showers. I actually d do not like hot showers. As weird <laughs> as that sounds. I love cold showers. <laughs> so that, that's how I can serve, but you know, there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of people who don't even think about conservation. They're just actually thinking about how do I get water in my life? Exactly. And that's kind of, uh, I guess we'll, we'll use that as a segue a little bit. I know that on March 22nd is World Water Day, um, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I don't Pisces know. Pisces month. <laughs> it is Pisces month. Yeah, you're a Pisces, right? Of course. You're a Pisces. And I'm not sure how I will celebrate World Water Day. Maybe we'll have to have a... a a zoom call and, and raise a glass to each other or something. But um, I'm sure there's probably lots of events out there that have to do with conserving, conserving water, finding clean water for helping those who have lacked access of clean water. And maybe we'll just, we'll, uh, we'll keep in touch about this, but I think that there's some activism that we can do some social activism that we can do to really not only talk about how great the water tastes, but like, how can we help others who lack access? Yeah. I know that there's, I was reading at worldvision.org that there's 785 million people who lack access to clean water. And clean water. That, that, that's, a, that's one in 10 people. That doesn't seem, 785 million, you're like, I don't know any of those people. That doesn't affect me, <laughs> right? But if we were yes. to line people up and say, okay, that one in 10 people don't have access to clean water, that's a lot of people. And I, I didn't really realize that till I lived in India and I was watching gray water and we'll even say black water, um, wastewater going down the streets, being poured into the streets um, along with um, animal uh, waste and wow. uh, people getting into a river, which is a holy river called the Ganga River or the Ganges. And it's a glacier fed river, really beautiful, but people bathe in it. They drink it. The cows, the dogs use it. Everyone uses this river, but it's really lack of access to clean water. When I was there, we had to use um, these UV treated uh, uh, water containers, basically, or a life straw to, to, you, had to you had to use that yes. so, that you, so that you could actually not get sick. Um, otherwise, you would. I think have, over time, you pro your body would probably move into its you know, third level of, of its immune system and say, okay, this is no longer an invader. I've already been sick from this. And, and your body will begin to allow those bacteria and viruses to live within you and just sort of filter them out without getting you sick, without the inflammation. But 
that's not really how I want to live. <laughs> I'd rather, rather have la- I'd rather have good water. I, I was reading in that same study where they, they that same survey where where there was over 200 million hours was spent by women. Um, this is specifically in uh, the continent of Africa, just uh, by women and girls hauling water every day from a clean water source, which may so which may be. Um, provided by, you know, a, you know, a charitable organization drilling a well, um, or it could be a natural water source. I, I don't know what that was, but usually that's 40 pounds to so 20 pounds of water on each arm going about six kilometers a day. And that's, a, that's a long ways to go. I mean, if you really think about it, I don't know what that is in, in miles. I guess I should have done the, the conversion, but that's a couple of miles, you know, you're going maybe two miles there carrying. I think 40- it's, maybe a kilometer away maybe that's the least and it takes about like 50 to 60 minutes on average for a woman to come with um one one day like like a a time period of water and it's collectively they're needing like 44 to 100 pounds of water so imagine how many trips they're they're taking daily just to get a basic necessity of water for food water for for bathing water for cleaning water for cooking so well in these in these countries uh, they went on to talk about that more people die from unsafe water than from the actual wars terrorism fighting that they actually die from waterborne uh, viruses and bacteria than than anything and so um i want to kind of give you an opportunity to kind of talk about that a little bit because um I know that as I think about clean water, I think of it as I'm appreciative of, I'm grateful. I'm so happy that I have this beautiful Berkey that sits in my, my kitchen and I can use that. And I know that I live in a country that's probably, you know, doing their best with water, even though, even though they add some really um, not so happy chemicals to our water, but, um, but I, I will tell you that it's clean. At least it's clean. I'm not, I'm not sifting through waste and, and disgusting water to be able to drink it. I could drink it and not get sick. So I want to chat about that a little bit and, and specifically the, the products that, that you know about and, and kind of giving back. Um, how can we give back and how, how is, you know, the, you know, the, the process of getting clean water improving, at least from your perspective, um, and being able to offer even living water. I mean, even if it's not living water, even if it's just access to clean water how what are you seeing happening with activism in these areas specifically africa but there is areas in in south america and india um, all over the world that are they don't have access and i'd like to see from your perspective what you're seeing and what people are trying to do and maybe what we can all do to chip in you know yeah so i think first and foremost we have to identify a proper water source so identifying a source that is a flowing, is a flowing body of water. Um, Because most of these people, especially in, you know, India and Africa, they're getting their water from surface water. So they're collecting it from either like a river or a lake or even a, um, a uh, built-in dam that was made through some, through a charitable, you know, through a charity. So just having the proper water source. And even then, holding the local organizations like the I guess you would say the governments in those areas accountable because um the thing is I actually learned that the reason the numerous water projects have failed even after everything being calculated they 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 did a whole plan on we're going to do this we're going to do this we're going to do this but the reason why they have failed is because women are being denied of rights to speak in these projects they're being denied the right to um, not include them at all into and these and the women are the ones who are going on this journey for this water they're the ones cleaning the water because once they have the water it's not like they can just go and drink the water they have to this they have to take all the contaminants out all the toxins so the women are going through this journey but they're not being listened to and so they're they're trying there's a way to reach out and how who who knows more than the people who are going through it themselves you know so finding ways to holding them accountable and letting the right people be a part of it instead of the people who have no idea what what's being 
fun or have no idea what the journey is like going a kilometer away or taking an hour to go get your water and and also um, holding them accountable and also Another thing is we can protect the water source. Um, what can we do to protect the water source? What kind of laws can be made? And also what kind of filtration systems can we insert in these water sources to provide clean water? Because yes, they're getting this water and collecting it and bringing it back, but that doesn't, that's only one process, one step to the process of yeah. finally being able to drink water because people do have, I learned as well that people have the water sources right next to them but they don't even trust the water source itself. They still think that the water is inferior. So they end up going to their neighboring, uh, the, the, the other towns to get clean water because they doubt their own water. So what good is what the source next to you if it's not a reliable, yeah. sustainable I, I wouldn't. Some, some of these source. places, some of these rivers there's, that are really close, at least where I lived in India, I wouldn't want to drink the water. There's no exactly. way. Exactly. Uh, so, I, I could see it where it's just cloudy and brown and gross. And, you know, it doesn't mean that it's all waste. It could be just sediment and rock, you know, that that's creating that, but I wouldn't want to drink it, you know? So um, I, I totally relate to that. You know, we want, we want to be able to find nice, clean sources of easily accessible water. I think I, I read that, I think this was a, a global uh, uh, statistic that said over 400 million school days are lost due to water related diseases. So even if you bring home some of this dirty water and boil it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're taking out all the contaminants. It just means that you're boiling it and that's great. And you might actually kill some bacteria, but it needs, it does need, unfortunately, we're in a place where we need to filter it. Even our rainwater, if you had a collection of rainwater is really not suitable for drinking um, because of our, our pollution problem that's on the planet. So we have like all this, I had a, I had a, a, a guy that I used to watch. I, I probably should watch again, but he had a YouTube channel that where he lived in this little teeny um, homestead in Arizona. And he lived in a tiny house and he was doing rainwater collection and solar collection. But even his rainwater collection wasn't for drinking water. It was just for his plants. And he had it through a whole filtering process and he had these big collection bins. I think, I don't know how, how they're massive bins that he was collecting them because in the desert um, we have monsoons, you know, they come in, everything yes. floods and you want, and it's more water than the earth can accept at that moment because it's so dry. It just doesn't uh, absorb it. So it ends up finding its way into rivers and into lakes and everything else. And usually quite muddy because it drug the earth with it. But if we could find a way to, to do what this gentleman was doing, really collecting it and using that for some of our, I'll call it auxiliary watering needs. Um, because frankly, I will tell you in the area that I live in and I look around and I see people who have grass in their yard. It, it makes me, um, I feel a certain way. And I'll, I'll, I'd like to use the, the feeling of upset or maybe even angry a little bit. Um, Frustration? No, maybe a little bit because I, I know that it's not an indigenous plant to be here in the desert, to have beautiful lush green grass. It's just not supposed to be. It's not, it's actually, an, I would call it an invasive species, even though it's not yeah. harming anything else. But what it is harming is that we spend, you know, water to try to keep it green. Whereas if you look out into the natural habitat, even in the spring, it, the desert's very alive. There's flowers and there's all kinds of different bushes. The juniper in the high desert, they, they flourish and they do really well and it's quite green, but we don't have grass. And that's not supposed to be here. I think that kind of goes back to what, we, what I said about what can we do to, to conserve. And I think it's axing, sorry, uh, landscaping companies, but if you live in a place that, that water is a luxury, we shouldn't have grass. We shouldn't exactly. have plants that, that require us to use that much and starting to look at new farming techniques that allow maybe our, um, you know, like the earth ship kind of concept where we're, where we're using the moisture that's produced through living in a space, capturing that condensation and using that 
as a source. I, I learned when I was in the military, a way to, you know, to, when you're boiling your food and if you don't have clean drinking water that you have a, a tarp above it and then you catch the condensation and then you capture that condensation and that's good drinking water after you've boiled it. And, you know, that was just a, a, a simple technique that I think we can implement to be able to, to help areas specifically, like we talked about Africa, India, but even China, I think I saw the statistic that 25% of China, which is, I think, if not India, China is the most densely populated. Maybe there's some areas in Indonesia, oh, yeah. very densely populated areas, but 25% of Chinese um, residents don't have access. So that's a quarter. That's one in four people are drinking horrible water. And if we really think about it, I don't want to point fingers, but man, if we really think about it, you know, we've had all these different um, pandemics and diseases and viruses and all this stuff that's come. And a lot of it has come from the way that we interact with animals, the way we interact with animals, you know, that whether it be like the bird flu or the swine flu or the, you know, even COVID they say came from an animal and all these different things, mm -hmm. they, they come from animals and the sickness that's within them. And I think a lot of that has access to, for them not having access to clean water too, because they're just drinking what's in the gutter. They're just drinking whatever to stay hydrated and to stay alive. And then of course we're eating that animal and we're ingesting all the poisons that they have too. And it's like this weird, hard to, to accept cycle that we can't um, seem to find a solution because we're so consumed with what's mine is mine. What's yours is yours. And we, we haven't really thought about it and kind of tie this all together as a global community where we have this resource. Sure, we have a lot more water, but, but it's not usable water. It's all ocean sailing water. We have to find some better ways of using the ocean to, to create our drinking water. And I, and I think that when we start thinking about each other more as a global family rather than separateness, really, we'll, yeah. find, we'll find more solutions. I, I think I, the statistic was that, um, I'm looking here on my notes here, um, that there was, I guess I can't find the statistic, but basically there was more uh, people that die from that than, than, than war. They die from unsafe water. And if, if we thought about that and go, okay, our neighbors are dying. I mean, for us, we can say, I mean, Mexico is our neighbor, right? And I would imagine there's, there's less people there that have access to clean water than in the United States, than in Canada. And if we really looked at it like that and said, hey, we know that our neighbors also need clean water instead of keeping them out and building giant walls why don't we invest in our neighbor and help them find clean water exactly but, you know so i i would love to have solutions that had to do with um you know living water machines i think that's awesome and i'm you know and maybe that is our future and maybe that's you know how we um how we save the planet is by finding ways i don't know what the the process is i guess maybe we, we can talk about that a little bit but what is the process of someone um getting uh, getting living water into their own home or into their community or into their um you know to their church or their school or what is the process and how does that how, how does someone go about getting that that pristine water source so the process is actually the easiest part, I would say, <laughs> um, because um, the access to it. So the beauty about um, the living water and the medical grade device is that the company is through word of mouth and it's super organic and they're not like Nike and Adidas where they're like, you know, everywhere you go, you see a picture of the Nike and it says, just do it everywhere. It's more so the water speaks for itself. And, you know, I don't have to sell. I just educate others on the water and what I've been through and speaking through my health testimony and speaking through others' health testimonies that I've been given the opportunity to share or even uh, financial testimonies as well. And so the process is quite simple. I mean, someone like me, like, let's say, you know, you saw all my videos on the water and you're like, Hey, Dossie, like this water seems amazing. I would love to learn more information and I would be happy to include all that information with you, give you the science, give you the, the, the water itself. Let me even try it. Um, and that's when you go opportunity of, because this machine is 99, it can hook up to 99% faucets in the world. I mean, there are villages, there are villages that literally 
literally have these machines in their homes. Like that's how important this water is to them. And I've actually, I'm not entirely sure what part of India, but I've seen this documentaries of people having this in their homes. And um, my community is actually ha- helping the Navajo tribe um, getting living machines into their villages, into their, into their community, their tribes. So it's quite simple. I mean, it was you, if this aligns with you and this feels like this is something that you feel super called to, um, we would just get on the process of getting this into your home. And like I said, you can hook up to any faucet in the world. So you'd be able to use in your kitchen, in your bathroom, anywhere you'd like. I personally have mine in my kitchen, um, on top of my kitchen counter. You can have it underneath as well. And I have it in within five to seven days of me placing the order. And the beauty of this is that it's an original equipment manufacturer company. So it's only every single part from the machine is from this original manufacturer. So if you're wanting to know where is exactly this is coming from, you're not having to worry about is my products coming from, you know, first of all, being unsustainable, going from China, Vietnam, Korea, and all these places, it's the original equipment manufacturer, and it's coming straight directly to your home, and you're able to use it. This installment is seamless, very, very easy. It's like five, 15 minutes, five to 15 minutes, depending on how handy you are. Me, I'm going to go on the 15 minute spectrum, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, and then, then in there, you just, flip it and you are not only drinking um nutrient hydrogen rich living alkalized ionized electrolyzed restructured water but it's free of chemicals and toxins and that's something that i took into giant giant consideration because i learned that the water in my city is actually the second dirtiest water in the united states so um Mm. I advise anyone um, listening to this to go on EWG water uh, water database, and it's going to ask you for your zip code. It's a wa- it's an organization. It's a water analysis, and they basically tell you what's in your water and in, in surrounding you. So I learned that there's 49 total contaminants and 13 exceeding health protocol in the water that I'm surrounding me in the city water. And this water, not only that. Um, if you look at the effects of it, it even says effects of cancer and I don't want to scare anyone, but into so yeah. much more. So, no, I'm sure um, I've, I've actually, I mean, I've always thought about that too, about, you know, we, we, we put fluoride in our water and different chlorines in our water and how that really is affecting us on a long term. You know, a lot of people say that fluoride will calcify the glands of the body, specifically the pineal gland and whatever other additives are being put in there to to make it suitable. And I think that that's interesting. I, I know that you, you use your water, not just to drink, but you, you wash your food with it. You, you clean with this, do, this water too, don't you? I do everything with my water machine. So this water, um, the machine is just so useful. It's also extremely sustainable. And the reason why that is, is because it can actually replace over a hundred appliances and household items that you'd be using at home. I use it to emulsify the oil-based pesticides that are hidden in your veggies. And I know you're probably thinking, I buy organic. Well, I buy organic too, but there's something in the pudding that is not being shown that you can't get out with regular water. And I've tried every single veggie wash and I've never gotten the results that I've got with my water to be able able to emulsify those oil-based pesticides and really see all those chemicals and pesticides in my veggies and typically um, essentially something that I was eating before I even knew and you can also use it for I actually use it for laundry detergents um hmm. I use it for um, I use it for everything I also have I call it beauty water as well I it's actually I can have the same pH as my skin nails and hair so I can it actually firms and tightens skin so I use it for that as well I use it for any acne, eczema. It's, it's used for so many things. Um, degreaser, stain remover. Before I even knew about the water, I would spill something on my shirt. I do that all the time. And my friends would be like, here, use the water. And, and so I ended up doing that method as well. And I recently had some, some, a little bit of mold come up on my air conditioner vents. And I, I use my water for that because not only that, it is also a sterilizer. I can use it for hand sanitizer. It disinfects 99% of 
germs within 30 seconds. And there's just so many more uses for this, uh, this water and this machine. And of course, it's in a beauty of convenience where it's all in the convenience of your home. And so right now with this chilly weather that, you know, Texas isn't really used to, everyone's going out and buying what are they buying? Plastic bottled water because they're worried about a water boil. They're worried about not having enough water. And this is where I'm so grateful and just sitting in my sitting in solitude and just thinking about how blessed I am for having the luxury of not having to go out and support plastic pollution, not having to go out and drinking not even the right water. And also while people are out buying all these things, I'm home with my machine you know, be able to use it for not just drinking water, but everything else. Yeah. I know. I remember living in Florida and we would have those, the hurricane scares, right? So when the hurricanes come about a week before you go to your local grocery store and that's the first thing that's gone is all those packs of water that are everywhere. Yes. And those are always gone that, that and too. gas. And, oh yeah. I mean, we, we think we'd all, we, you grab that and you, you grab water, um, toilet paper, beer, right? <laughs> That's what people in Florida would get. And you'd, you'd, you'd be ready for the hurricane. You'd ride it through. But I think that's interesting. Tell me why um, can you use water as a hand sanitizer? I think that's what the audience is want, wants to hear. Like, why is that? Uh, we always think that it has to like have alcohol in it or something. I use I use uh, uh, an essential oil. So I, I know the answer a little bit, but I use an essential oil one to t- sanitize myself. But tell me about why water can be a hand sanitizer so um just for the audience listening to this i you probably have some hand sanitizer sitting in your home or you probably go somewhere where there's hand sanitizer especially now what we're dealing with you if you look at that bottle just look at the ingredients in there and uh you'll be you'll be surprised as to what's being absorbed by your skin but um so the water can actually create a um you don't need alcohol essentially it can actually create um acidic water it's a 2.5 ph and so this water actually um neutralizes and basically as is a disinfectant and so what creates what creates that water is uh, something called hypo hypo chloric acid and it's yeah. basically created through salt and water and so salt and water creates that acidic water and then disinfect boom so it's kind of like doing like a neti pot, you know, I do a neti pot yes. almost every day and with the salt. So, so the living water machine, the water that you would use to clean with is not the same one you want to drink, right? That's good. No, no, no. Yeah. So the beauty of the machine, and if anyone listening to this wants to learn more, I gotcha. I'm, I'm the water goddess, like Ryan was saying. So I'll definitely send you a video. I'm a visual person. So if you're like, I need to see this, I gotcha. But, um, so the machine itself, it has seven different types of pH water uses. So each pH can be used for other things other than drinking. And you can start off like, you know, if you need to feed your baby, which can't be drinking a higher alkalinity than uh, we can as adults, um, you would use a different type of pH. And so that setting is just super seamless. It's actually updated to like, kind of like house world, we are a, a touch screen. So you just push up a button and then the water flows through and you can actually tell the difference. Um, it's, there's no like, Oh, maybe I can tell the difference. Um, even in the way that the water smells or looks as well. Um, so you can, that's what makes the water use for any any other than just drinking um and so i'll definitely have to show you a video um i mean i think i i think i showed you ryan and you got to see a little bit of a snippet of it but um that's pretty much what you can use just other than just drinking water all of it's super fascinating where where tell tell the audience um even i'll I'll put it in the show notes but where they can get a hold of you the best and how to see these videos and how to learn more and to have conversations with you. What's the best <laughs> way to get a hold of you? So best way to get a hold of me. I love people. I love connecting. I love aligning with my fellow essentially sisters and brothers. So if you want to get a hold of me, um, I'm definitely always active on Instagram at Awakened Soul. I have an extra K for Kangen because it's called Kangen Water. Um, and um, I also made that um, 
make that tag of awakened soul because I just want to awaken other souls to the beauty of true health, true water, and also to true wellness. So that's why I've kind of desired that in my Instagram, I wanted to have purpose and be intentional with my platform. So if you want to reach me, I have a link for Calendly. If you want to do a phone call or a face-to-face, I'm always happy to do that as well. And I'm always also happy to um, respond to messages and also give you the, all the information that you are probably like, I need to see this video because I don't believe her or this is too good to be true. They need to see the video. I watched yeah, the video yeah. and they, yeah, they got to see the video. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to let them ask you for it unless you care if I put that in the link, but um, in the show notes, but I'll let them kind of go to you to, to get it. So I think having a conversation, um, well, it makes it a little bit definitely more personal and also um, kind of creates the dialogue of, of what is the reason? Because there's a lot of health benefits. And just to kind of summarize where we've gone today, there's a lot of health benefits to, you know, doing yoga and doing breath work and eating proper and eating organic. But there's also a ton of health benefits to drinking water. Just think about what you bring into your body every day. Um, there's so many people who think that just drinking diet soda is a, is a good decision. And really, it's not. It's not a good decision. Um, drinking uh, different sports drinks. They think, well, I'm getting the electrolytes, right? But it's not always the best decision for proper hydration and for, mm-hmm. for longevity. And really, all those are really nice things to have. I mean, if you really wanted to flavor your water, you can always, you know, you put a piece of nice clean, you know, lime in it or, or, <laughs> lemon. or, le- or lemon juice or, you know, or orange something, you know, like clean it and then put it in there, you know? And so we always think, well, I, I'm kind of bored of water. I want to have some flavor. And I, I, I do that too, you know, but I occasionally I'll go, okay, I have a, a lime here or a lemon and or I'll fresh I'll, pressed juice. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or, or juice. Yeah. is another really great way. Um, I, I even add essential oil sometimes to, to some of my water just to, to sort of enhance it with just a little bit, just one little drop. And you have to teach uh, me that. Yeah. There's lots of different citruses and I even sometimes just to mix it up a little bit, even peppermint, um, especially if it's an essential, Ooh, if it's a, um, if it's a good essential oil, <laughs> you don't want one that has a lot of different oils in it, but one that's an essential oil from the peppermint plant, um, is really quite nice too. So, um, but there's a lot of people who don't have access to this water and, um, we're trying to draw awareness so that others can get it. Um, so that, um, it becomes not just a a nice thing to have, but something that's for everyone that we can say, Hey, you know, there's villages in India that are doing this. There's places in Texas that are doing this. There's, um, places in, in Mexico that are doing this. And there's places all over the world that are able to make this happen for their longevity of life, for their health, for their children, um, and then we can tackle the bigger topic of, you know, uh, co- conserving water and, you know, finding new sources of water and then ways to clean it. And so, um, or at least make it drinkable, make it uh, available. And I, there's a lot of companies out there that are doing, um, you know, drilling wells and that kind of stuff. And it's, it's hard work. It's really, really hard work. If you don't have to drill water, if you're listening to this podcast, probably you didn't have to drill a well, but maybe, maybe, but maybe you didn't have to mm-hmm. drill a well. And if you didn't need to drill a well, then what are you doing um, with your water? And maybe this is a, the opportunity for you to just step back and say, okay, I can make some changes. I, I, I spend a ton of water, a ton of money on water and plastics that I throw away that are going into landfills. I spend a lot of time um, in the hot shower wasting water. That's my luxury, right? But remember the statistics that we talked about, about those who don't have access, who um, are struggling just to carry water for several miles to bring it home so that their kids can have, uh, you know, boiled rice, you know, some water for the for the rice. And there's a this is a, a really big topic that we can, you know, we've covered here in an hour, but um, 
we can certainly go a lot deeper and I will guarantee we'll give it another, maybe, maybe even by after world water day, global water day, we'll, we'll chat again because, um, Dossie, I've really enjoyed speaking with you and really this is super informative. I think that you, those who are at least a little bit curious should reach out to you. Even if it's just like, Hey, I'm interested. Show me this machine. Show me the touch screen. Show me how it works. Like I'm interested in making a small difference, at least for my family. And then maybe sharing it with my neighbors and yeah, and so maybe powerful. making a, 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 a somewhat of a difference and see how I feel. So I'm going to leave in the show notes how to get a hold of you and okay. any, any links that you want me to share. I will get those from you here afterward. But thank you for taking the time. I know you're busy. You're on a lot of um, a lot of calls, lots of videos and lots of phone calls trying to to spread this beautiful word. And I just I'm very yes. grateful for you and thank the time you. that we get to spend together today. Thank you, Ryan. I'm an emotional person, so I might end up crying here. No, I'm just, kidding. I'm just kidding. Super, super thankful to be um, given the opportunity to, since I started, my purpose was to educate others. And I just, I'm so glad that I was able to give out this opportunity and just want people to know that if you're suffering in silence from something um, and you're wondering, maybe why do I feel so called to this? Then definitely shoot me a message because I was suffering in silence and I dealt with some things that I really, really just wanted to to get rid of and I tried so many things and me being so in tune with um myself and being rooted in, into who I am um this was kind of like an answer to me so um yeah I'm so thankful for the opportunity just to educate others and talk all things water <laughs> and of course always going to be the water the water person like i'm if you know me i'm like that's the water girl that's the water girl. So, um, thank you so much ryan for giving me the opportunity and a wonderful talking to you Dossie. chat later you too you too thank you